Hi guys, thanks for tuning into my new video. So today we're looking at add-ons for UMMO RPG. Now we have the new Skillbooks add-on from DX4D. It's just been released and it aims to help optimize your workflow when dealing with player and monster skills. So I'm going to be showing you how to install it and then we'll have a look at uh, some of the cool features that come with the add-on. Uh, firstly, please be aware that I'm using the current version of UMMO RPG 3D, but this add-on will also work for the 2D version. Uh, and I'm, of course, I'm also running uh, Unity 2018.4. If you're using a Unity version that's prior to 2018.3, just understand that the prefabs are handled differently. So you may not have some of the same processes, uh, but I'll try and highlight this uh, as we go on. So having a look at the vanilla install now, and we're going to be dealing with the skill templates. So I'm just going to click on one of the NPCs here and scroll down. You can see we've got the monster script. It's the same for the player script. Uh, but we come down here, we've got skills and buffs. So this is where we actually place our skill, uh, our skill attacks on the characters. So that this basically uh, sets up their whole skills for the rest of the game and the skill progression. Um, as you can see, we do it manually by just dropping the skills that we want on there. Uh, and if we, want to, uh, if we want to share skills or if we want to update skills, we have to do it for each of the prefabs that we're actually building. So all of the characters, if you're sharing skills between them, um, you just need to manually go and place it on. And if you change the skill out for something else, you're going to have to go back and drop it in on each of those prefabs for it to update. So it's straightforward, but it's not really optimal. So the whole point of the DX4D skillbook add-on is to make it a little bit more optimized, but also it gives a couple of extra cool features. Now, we'll just jump straight into how to install it. So uh, when you get the download, it'll be a zip folder, and you'll need to extract that to somewhere on your computer. I've actually got it in the project folder. It just keeps everything neat and tidy and where it needs to be. I've created the folder for DX4D, and I've stored it in there. So we'll open that up, and you can see there's a couple of options in here. Now, we need to go to step one, first of all. Uh, now, I will mention as well that this uh, add-on is actually standalone. You do not need to have uh, any of the other add-ons in order for it to operate, but it does actually work alongside uh, the other DX4D. 4D add-ons that are available. Now the first thing we need to do is run the patcher. So we're just going to click this, open it up, and you see it's just going to bring in some of this stuff. Now this patcher is uh, basically what makes the changes to the core files of your MMO RPG for the add-on to uh, correctly work. So we're just going to let it compile, give it a few seconds. All right, so then that's just brought in this new folder with the scripts that we need. That's fine. Now we go to step two, and you can see this is actually just a README file. Uh, before installing, go back to Unity, and we need to run the patcher from the Tools menu. So, of course, that's up the top here. We go to Tools, DX4D, and Patcher. Now this is going to open up this window with this big red block here saying UMMO RPG Skillbooks. So we're just going to click on that. It should pop up and say Green with Installed next to it, and we just close that window. Now we need to move to step three because uh, we are now ready to install the add-on itself. So I'm going to double click that and again here we go it's got a whole bunch of stuff here so we've got the scripts and then we've got a bunch of these example assets that we need um, we're just going to bring them in click on import and this will install the add-on files to the package and yep everything's all clear and good to go now there's actually another download that you can get here um, this is for the prefabs for the skillbooks uh, add-on now this is just um, example prefabs that have already been modified uh, and I'll explain that a little bit later I'm going to bring those in anyway just so we can have a quick look as you can see here we've got uh, variants of the entities that are in the game so I'm just going to click on import and we'll just have a look at those in a minute. Uh, but as we can see now, everything else is set up and we are ready to actually start going. So let's just have a quick look at those and I'll show you what uh, what's actually changed. So when we click on the Warrior, now this is where 2018.3 and onwards um, has changed the way that prefabs are handled. It's using the nested prefab. Now when you click on a prefab in your project menu, you won't be able to actually see the inspector. You'll need to open it up and go into its own little zone here. Um, but otherwise, it's exactly the same as any of the previous ones. You'll just be able to get access to it um, without having to click into the nested prefab. So we come down to the play script, and now you'll see that it's actually a little bit different. We've actually got uh, the starting skills brought up to the top of the player script, and they're running on these things called the scriptable skill sets. So I'm just going to highlight one of those. I'm going to get out of this because we don't need it now. Um, and you can see here that we've got this uh, it's normal attack warrior sword, and this is set up in a little starting skill set. So if we click on set up here, we can have a look and you see this is where we've now got the, the same as what we had before, where we had the individual skills onto a, um, a, an array. And now it's actually brought into this uh, nice looking user interface here. Now, if we click back on here, you can see we can actually switch on and off all sorts of different things. So um, we can adjust it to the way that we want it to. So we can just have it like that. And when we put in a few more, actually, I'll just 
up this to two so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about with that. Um, and maybe we want to have uh, therapy, we're going to bring that one in. So now we've got two on our list and when we come across here we can see that it's got all this here and I'm just going to open that up so we've got a little bit more info and we can just adjust that to however we like. Now let's talk about how to uh, make this work and how to put that on our characters without using the prefabs that we've got. So of course if we come to the bandit now and we have a look uh, you can see there's no more of the um, skill template bit in here like it was just before. When we come up, it's up to the top, but of course our prefabs don't have anything on them because these instances of them uh, have been updated and the, the actual prefab they're running off doesn't have any of that information. So this is where we could use those uh, preloaded um, prefabs here. We could switch them out, but that's going to be a little bit of a pain. So let's actually just go and modify the originals that we've got. So, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Uh, at the top of the uh, inspector window here, we've got open, select, and override. So we're just going to click select, and that's going to find the prefab for the bandit in the project folder. We're going to click on that. We're going to have to open it up uh, in the new 2018.3 plus way. And as you can see here, we've got the starting skills uh, and equipment skills. So we're going to go to starting skills for now, and we'll just click on one in here. And we'll do it this way. Uh, I'll show you. We can click on this little circle here, and that's going to bring up all of the available skill lists that we've got. So we just need to find Bandit starting skills. Here it is here. Just double click on that, and now it's in there. So that's great. We've done that. We can actually just save that out now. And if you have a look, when we come to our instance of Bandit, it's got the Bandit starting skills in there. Now there's actually an issue with uh, UMO RPG and the latest Unities where um, it's going to give us an error when we actually start the game. Um, this is something to do with when you edit the uh, the prefabs um, uh, or the base prefabs and then you try and run the game. It doesn't uh, it doesn't trigger the network identity in the scene and you have to play around with um, saving and, and uh, the scene before you can run it. Um, that'll pop up when we go to have a little test later and I'll show you how to fix that when it comes up. So we've also got to do the skeleton, so let's get our skeleton done. Uh, I'm going to click on one, I'm just going to open it up. Skeleton starting skills, excellent, there we go. So that's now updated that, which is all fine. Now we need to find our warrior and we need to adjust that. So we can do it for the archer as well. I'm just going to do it for the warrior for the video um, just to try and cut down on the time. But it's the exact same process, so we're just going to click on here, open the prefab. We're going to come down here, we need starting skills, we're going to click one and we're going to find our warrior starting skills. Now we can actually add uh, a couple more so this is one of the cool features that you can do. You can actually have several lists and we're going to chuck on the defender spells. So if I click on this you'll see there's already a list here with uh, some of the other functions so you can actually split your, um, your skill lists up into different categories so of course you've got your weapon based ones um, and here is where you've got more of your actual professional class uh, skills uh, lists so we've got a healer, we've got rogue spells and we've got the defender spells here which are actually made up of the original skills for the warrior anyway and we can show our categories and show the information on that and as you see here we've just got that so we've just chucked this on um, on our warrior which is great we can chuck that in there. Um, and now we're actually ready to play. So what's going to happen? I'm going to click play and we're going to get some errors. So let's just watch the console. And as you can see now, we've got a whole bunch of these errors that have come up. Um, this isn't actually to do with the add-on. This is to do with UMMO RPG. So if you do get it, um, I always seem to get it on mine. It might just be the version that I'm using. But um, yeah, these always pop up. So we're just going to click stop on that one there. Now you can see that when the world pops up, it's got the little star, which means it's been changed. So we need to save that. Just click save and that'll clear when I click play and you can see now we no longer have those warnings so it's all good to go. I'm going to click server and play and we're going to create our character. I'm going to call him Greg because why not. Going to wait for him to load up and then we're going to click start and now you can see we've got on our skill list we've got a whole bunch of these in here that we can now use and if we run up our skeletons should work perfectly. There we go. So now we're attacking and playing and I'm going to run away now because I don't want to keep doing that. Now here's where things can get a little bit cool and a little bit more optimised. So I'm going to click stop there. Now I'm going to come back to my warrior. Uh, I'm going to find a little shortcut for that by doing this. If I go to the network manager I can click straight to the prefab. It just saves me having to navigate the menus and the, profile, uh, sorry, the project window there. Now I'm going to come down here and you can see we've got uh, this character here. We've got our defender spells and our warrior starting skills. Um, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify that. Now we didn't actually need to open up the, that, we could have just gone straight to it, but I want to, I don't want it to have therapy anymore. So I'm going to go up to a setup and I'm just going to change that back to one and I'm going to get rid of that therapy. 
Now, so I've updated that there. Uh, what's going to happen now is when I press play, we go back to our Greg, we click start, we have a look. Now when I open it up, therapy's gone. So this way you can actually dynamically change a lot of the skill sets that come for the character. Now you won't be able to do it during the runtime, but uh, when you actually have downtimes and patches, um, you'll be able to actually uh, change out the, the different skills. So this is really handy for when you're in the development cycle and you're actually trying to figure out what kind of skills you do want and don't want on your character. You can easily chop and change it by chopping out um, the different bits of the list rather than going to each of the prefabs that you've got um, and changing it out manually. So um, yeah, effectively, if you, you could use this list on across several different classes, um, you want like, you know, there to be two different types of healers and you want them to both have the same healing skills. Maybe they're from like a separate race or something like that. Um, you can change it all on uh, through this system and it will update across all the prefabs that you have. So that's that's the really handy tool for it. But there's also another cool feature that I want to go over and let's just have a quick look. So we've actually got weapon skill sets here. So the idea behind this is that items themselves can actually have skill sets assigned to them um, and these special skills can uh, only be accessed when that item is equipped and then when you take them away or when you or unequip the item the skills will actually disappear so this way you can have special items that you can get in the game that will give you a special ability like a special attack or a special um, a special healing ability or a special uh, spell excuse me um, so we're going to try that out now. So what we need to do is we need to find the items themselves. So if we go down to the resources folder in the UMMO RPG folders, we go down to items, we go to equipment, and we have a look now. We've got all of our items here, and you'll see at the right at the top of the items uh, is the skill set. So I'm just going to click on one on that. And you'll see now that we've got uh, an element in here that we can pop in, and we want to put in the sword skills. So now you can see if we click on sword skills, the difference that we've got here is we've both got a normal attack, but we also have a strong hit. So I'm going to take out that normal attack because we already actually have that on our warrior, so we don't really need that one there. Um, well, actually, I'm going to need to go strong hit. I'm just going to bring that down to one. So now when we come here, you can see that it's got strong, uh, strong hit is an option on the sword. And if we go and have a look in our class, we can see that the warrior definitely doesn't have that. So that's cool. So now what's going to happen is when we click play, because our character already has the uh, the strong sword equipped. It is created, so that's fine. Now when we click start, you can see now it's changed the default there. Um, and if we come up here, we also have the normal attack, which is from our warrior. Oop, and strong hit. Uh, and luckily we actually did have uh, strong hit. So one of the things that I, I forgot about there is that actually strong hit is uh, an, not uh, unlockable right from the start. So if we go strong hit, uh, we've got to go here. We have a look required level base value two so we can actually make that one um, and try that learn default so it's learnt by default and of course if we come here that hasn't updated because we need to actually stop and then start again so that it uh, rejigs it in the server click start now and you can see now because we've got this highlighted it automatically defaults to the uh, strong hit there because that's the only one on the equipment so when you lock in the equipment it will um, it will override the default attack and it's claiming that the strong hit is the default attack so what I need to do is I need to actually put the normal attack on there as well and you can see we can also do our normal attack so this is just a cool way of basically um, setting it up so each weapon will have a different uh, ability assigned to it um, and you usually want to leave the default attack on there so like as it is it'll come up here and then number two will be strong attack so you can actually set up as many skills uh, as you want and they will overwrite your default attack on there um, so yeah we'll put that in and then you can see we've still got the other skills so that was just one of the really cool features i found with this because it allows you to um, play around a little bit with the way your mmo rpg is set up you can have uh, weapons with their own special skills so you can have magical weapons that have uh, special abilities um, and that sort of stuff is pretty cool so anyway thanks for watching um, everything is working now so i would definitely recommend this add-on because it does have some uh, really cool features and it does just help streamline things things just look better um, when you're trying to deal with the development cycle. So clicking on here, I just like the look of that a lot better. We go to the bandits, uh, see we've got a couple of different attacks on there. Anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, hope this helped. Um, yeah, I'll catch you guys around.